Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another ink profile. This one is not part of any series and it is KWZ Standard Gray Plum. It's a very dark grayish purple that comes across, sometimes it actually comes across black and other times I've actually seen it come across almost tanzanite, like a, an intense sort of a blue. In fact, one of the websites where I did find it for sale, I thought, oh, that looks like a mistake because their swatch looked like a steely blue color. But I think it's just because this this ink is very interesting. It, it changes depending on the lighting, depending on the paper, the nib, the whole nine yards. So let's dive right in and look at this one. Uh, we're gonna start here in the Tamoy River Journal. And let's see if I can get it a little bit uh, closer for you. So we, I started here with the broad nib and uh, let's talk about availability. So I'm not really finding this at any US retailer. And if there is, if it is available here, I haven't run across it yet, but I did find it at Fonto Plumo and I found it at Pure Pens. So I will do some links to those and we'll just have to keep looking. Maybe if you know of another place to get it, you could comment. But as, as I zoom that in, you can see it looks almost black here, except for where there are smears where you can begin to kind of notice that purplish gray in there. And, and this took a little bit of extra time to dry on. This is Tamoy River 68 GSM, and it did take 50 seconds to dry in the broad nib. So then, let me scooch this up just a little. So the next sample is in the Goulet um, 1.5 stub. And th that brightens it just a little bit, but it's really hard to show. Even with the camera, which normally does brighten, what I'm getting is a little bit of a darkening. So you'll definitely want to get a sample of this if you can, or try it out. The, my sample came from my pen friend MZ and she happens to live in the country that this is produced in, uh, in Poland. So thank you very much for this sample and other samples that you've sent. It's been a long time I've wanted to review this. Um, I could see that in that stub nib it took 30 seconds to dry. I was seeing a little bit of variation but not very much. In, in the color that I, I wouldn't necessarily call it shading, but there is some, just not a heavy, heavy degree of shading. Okay, and then we'll, whoops, <laughs> disturbing the other side. We'll move on down to this bottom portion here, which was written in um, the Lamy Fine Nib, all of this bottom part here. So starting right here, uh, it looks like it was almost dry at 30 and then it looks like I spaced out on the timing. I would, I'm going to have to guess about 35 seconds in the fine nib. And my first impressions are just, it had great flow and saturation. Um, it's a little bit dark for me because I generally like a brighter color, but this is excellent for note taking and um, for writing to my mother because she likes a really dark ink that she can see up against the paper. And I did write, make a note down here, black sheen over the letters. It's hard for me to show, except for um, on this. Uh, this is 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. And we may be able to get it to look just right where we can see that there's some black sheen. Maybe you can see that, but it's hard for me to show. Anyway, I, my theory is that that's what's interfering, or that is what is making it look so dark in the nibs, um, is that, that black sheen that comes out on it. But that's just kind of a, an initial theory. And here is the chromatography. I thought that was very interesting. I mean, it just moved right away, and uh, it, it's like a, well, a plumish kind of a, maroonish color and then at the top it looks turquoise it's very interesting so let's get this back down to our normal place here and what I'll do next is show you the the water bath test this is 20 minutes submerged in the water and this did behave like a typical fountain pen ink that's how I know it's their standard it's not their iron gall or anything it, it'll it cleaned right off the paper and uh there you have it. So, oh, our last ink that we actually did was quite some time ago, but the Twisby Orange got an A in the clean out. Just for those continuous viewers who are following ink reviews, I tried to get a little bit of a break from the ink reviews for a while, so I've been doing other things, but 
here we are. Okay, let's move this aside. And then let's get out the... Uh, this is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grit paper. Again, it looks very, very dark in the broad nib. And it took more than 50 seconds to dry. It was really taking a while on this paper. But it looks nice. It certainly stands out. It gives you, if you don't look at it really close under your own natural lighting, uh, you know, with your eyes, then it looks black. But that's, that's partially the camera that's doing that. And probably that sheen over the top that's creating even more. Because right here, this, these letters, if I tilt it, I am seeing a little bit of the purple with my eyes, but not with the camera and the lighting and everything. So here it is in the stub. 35 seconds to dry and I saw just a little bit of variation here and there but it, it was all throughout all the writing samples on all the paper I have very smooth well except for the copy paper it wasn't too smooth on that but I don't expect that so here it is in the Lamy fine nib 30 seconds to dry and I just put a note nice saturation and flow it's really cool Okay, we'll look at the backs of the papers once I get all these samples done, because there's quite a few. I did get a little carried away, because I thought how hard it might be to get a sample of this. I mean, I, okay, so there's some black sheen showing up there, too. Again, very hard to show, but it, that's what happens. It pulls up on top anywhere where it's thick, and it's really a black sheen. So, um, broad nib. It took a little more than 40 seconds to dry. Then down in the, the Goulet stub, the 1.5, it looks to me like it must have been about 50. I guess I run out of uh, patience on some of these. It was taking quite a bit of time, but it looked really nice. It actually, it, it went across this paper, which can give trouble, but it did not give any trouble to this ink. I thought it was a great match in all three nibs. So here's a Lamy Fine nib. 30 seconds, it was almost dry in that nib. It was excellent on this paper in all three nibs. Okay. Well-behaved ink, I would say. Um, here we're going into the Loistrom 1917 dot grid. This is a little pocket-sized one. but And this is really just kind of a, a, just an opportunity to look at it on here because of the, this being the bullet journal paper that I and many others use. So it, it kind of look nice on that paper which is much more cream than these white papers that's much more of a cream uh, I didn't do dry times I just wanted to show how it looked and check for bleed through so on the back um, I won't count the bleed through up here because that was put on real heavily with a broad nib there was just a little area here and there where it tried and that's you know on each one if if the nib lingered very long for making a dot or ending a box, for instance, right down here, then there was a little bleed through. But you you pr you may be using like a, a fine nib or an extra fine that's finer than what I use. But see, that was what produced that bleed through. I, I must have just hesitated there. And then here it was at the box. Yeah, making the boxes was what created most of the problem. And then up here where it seemed like it was real thick. But I still think you could use it on the Loistrum paper. I would probably stick with a fine nib, but then it doesn't really matter. It wasn't really going through. It just had some seep through or show through. That's all. Okay, so now the last one is the um, Georgia Pacific 20 pound copy paper. It looks really black on here. This is very absorbent, cheap paper. I do see feathering. Let me hold that right up. I see quite a bit of feathering, but it, I've seen a lot worse. So I wouldn't really think that that would bother you all that much if you're just having to take notes or write on copy paper in the office. It was almost dry at 30 seconds in the broad nib. 20 seconds, it was very close to dry in this stub nib. And it's looking very gray, even to my eyes. And it's looking black through the camera. So that's what's happening to it. It's just, you know, it just, uh, you lose the purple, that's all. So then in the fine nib, 10 seconds dry because 8 seconds was still smearing. I tried again. But let's check for bleed through and then we'll run through all of them to check for that. Okay. It was really pretty impressive. It was very well behaved considering this is cheapy paper. This is a super saturated dark purpley black uh, grayish ink. Um, I had a little bit of like almost seep through but really not much. 
and that was just in the broad nib. I don't see anything coming through with the stub or the fine Lamy fine nib. So I think, you know, you could judge for yourself. You're getting a lot of ghosting, but I think you could probably use this in the office. Okay, so on the back of the CBS Caliber paper, uh, we have a little bit of seepage where it was painted with a paintbrush on, and then, you know, the normal ghosting. Nothing to worry about on this paper. Okay, and then on the Rhodia 80 GSM copy paper, um, tiny bit of seepage where I painted it on. We won't even count that. No, I don't usually do that. I wonder why I did that. No, okay, I didn't paint it on, but I did it, you know, repeatedly with the broad nib till it filled it in. Yeah, because I was going to say, I can see the marks from the nib. So, uh, but no bleed through. Just, uh, let's just not count that corner because that was put on so heavy. And everything looked good. Just a little ghosting. So, back on 68 GSM Tamoy River paper. Oh, we're looking back on my inked pens. We have a little ghosting, but nothing that would really bother me. Hopefully, it, it wouldn't you. So, Okay, and then, of course, this was the 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. You can begin to see how the purple, it's there. And then you can see all that, like, black sheen over the top. It's quite an interesting ink. If you're really into dark inks, you, you'll really want to give this a try, I think. If you like, you know, that little hint of purple that comes when it wants to and, and the darkness of the ink, it's really nice. Of course, it seeped through because that was put on with an ink syringe. Very, very... Um, uh, liberally, let's put it that way. Okay, so let's look at our comparison panels. Panel. We have one panel, and it was rough. I don't have anything that's quite like this. It was rough to find things that would really uh, compare well. Let's see. I think I need to do a little bit of adjusting here, maybe. Okay, I, that may do. <laughs> it, it, let's try this. Um, in the middle is our ink of the day, KWZ Standard Gray Plum. I kept going back and forth on how it was spelled because I saw it different places, but I saw it more places with an E, and I like to spell gray that way, so I just uh, it finally settled on that. But look at our complexity within there. That's really neat. Um, it does show that it it's, uh, doesn't have any water resistance, but... I love the, the variation and the beauty beauty that comes out when you place water on the ink dabs. Um, unlike the KWZ Iron Gall Gummy Berry, where it, you know, it's quite, uh, oh, I guess you could call it permanent. It certainly doesn't move around a lot. You lose a little bit of the color seeping around it, but it's, it's quite bulletproof there. Now, this was really hard to find anything that looks anything like it. The one right next to it is Diamine Scribble Purple. That just came in, and that has kind of a, a sheen over the top of it that's also changing things. Kind of a gold sheen. It's really interesting. I can't wait to play with some of these other ones more and test them out. But as you can see, nothing really looks like it. Maybe Private Reserve Ebony, you know, may look the most like it, but... It's, it's a dark purple, too, and more of the purple comes through the top part and even here. So it's very interesting. I like a, an ink like this that is so unique that it's like almost a standalone. It's very cool. And, oh, of course, I don't have every ink sample there is ever made either, but it's interesting. Robert Oster Deep Purple is just so much more purple, uh, you know, traditional or <laughs> that's a word. More traditional purple. Noodler's violet. You know, we may have a little bit of um, in common with the inner part of the color, but other than that, on the surface, it certainly looks a lot more plumish. It doesn't get that dark black look to it or, um, yeah, it's just totally different. Same with Diamine 150th Anniversary Purple Dream. And these are what I consider dark purples, but and even... Um, J. Arbonne Porse de Lune is a dark purple, but it's bright compared to this one. <laughs> so, uh, down here, Lamy Crystal, Azurite, um, Azurite, that one, uh, it's just so much more regular purple, so to speak. But let's see about some of these extras. I, I didn't pull out too many more, but I did, this ink today's Gray Plum made me think of Diamine Amazing Amethyst just in that complexity within it. Like if you just look at the, the chromatography part, it really made me think of that. 
Other than that, though, we're, we're not we're not in the same ballpark even. Oh, we already had the 150th. Okay, so I just have two more. KWZ Standard Brown Pink, which, again, it was this inner part that, by memory, made me recall it. But this looks like a dark plum, and it isn't affected as much by by any black or gray or anything like that. So, so again, totally different. Then Birmingham Allegheny River Twilight is a beautiful... Uh, gray with a hint of purple and in fact I, I didn't take the time to make another of these but I really felt like this was darker than it's showing here but maybe this one faded I don't know I'm going to make another one later to see but it did bring to mind this purple because in a nib this looks really dark and you don't really see the purple but again you don't see black per se either so you're seeing more of a slate gray sometimes okay so what did I think of this ink Good question. Okay, let's look on here. I really like it. It's well behaved. It's dark, whoops, um, which is not maybe my go-to uh, thing, but I, I have purposes for dark inks, like taking notes where I really want good read back. And I, if I'm using a darker ink and a brighter ink to keep switching and show, you know, where I want to emphasize, then I might um, have a bright purple, you know, to go with this, or my mother writing a letter to her. So the saturation was way high, almost a nine. The flow to me was great, it was a seven. There was no problems, even on that cheaper paper where it can get draggy, it didn't. Shading was low, I thought, in the nibs that I'm using, so I gave it a two. The only bleeding or feathering that I really saw was on the copy paper, um, and so I didn't really mark it for that. I thought the dry time was a little long, so instead of a five, I gave it a three. I, I was kind of marked this paper as long would be a low number, short would be a high number. So I, that is my mind, I guess. Sheen, there was black sheen. I put a three. It was present and it was black. It's hard to see in the writing, but you can definitely see that on the ink uh, splatter. No halo or shimmer. Overall, I gave it a seven. It's dark in the nib, but it's well behaved. You know, it's going to clean out a pens just fine. Um, it was really good on this paper, too. This is that really nice, like, the Hewitt Packer 30-pound, I think, or something like that. Okay, um, let's try the Nick Stewart technique. I'm dying to try it on this ink because I make the weirdest notes shaping your character. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to make sure it wasn't somebody's phone number or something. Okay, um, here is our visual journal on water. And muddy water. This was the muddy water this one made. <laughs> kind of funny looking. Okay. Okay, so... Oh, main paintbrush is wet already and dirty. Okay, here's our ink sample. I'm just going to try it with the one color because I really want to see what this will do. Let me check. Oh, there goes Willie. Manuel's going to let Willie out. <laughs> okay. What's the hold up, Chris? <laughs> Here we go. I am dying to see how this will come out because it was such an interesting ink on the watercolor paper over in the uh, in the tile that I'm just kind of excited to see what will happen. And I hope it will dry enough to show us. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. I thought maybe it might do stuff for us. <clears throat> Look at that. Ooh, I can already see pink and blue coming out. I don't want to get too carried away right away, though. I want to try um, see what the nibble produced down at the bottom here. Oh, that's neat. Okay, it does move pretty well with the nib. <laughs> I think I got the water on there kind of funny, but still, that's neat. All right, let's put on a bottom layer of water. You didn't go out, Willie? You made him get up and you didn't go out. Oh my goodness. Willie's over to the side. Luckily he's not up here or there'd be paw prints everywhere. But <laughs> huh, this definitely reminds me of, of Diamine Amazing Amethyst in terms of how it starts to give us all that chromatography almost immediately. That's cool. Okay, now we have another option we can 
use the Lamy fine nib just to put in a couple details, but this is definitely going to be a unusual piece. I mean, right away I got two great big boulder looking things there. I guess we could still have a tree. I mean, no law against that. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, let's see what happens if I make it come in a little bit closer for you so you can see. It, it's changing every minute. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm not catching. Well, isn't that... Okay, there we go. Now we're catching on it. I do like to see it when it moves when it catches the water just right, but I think it started to dry over here. Over here, we still got lots of water, so we can, we can influence things a little bit. But as you can see, it just has such an interesting uh, way about it. I mean, I can see pink, and I can see definitely that turquoise coming out in there. So who knows what this will look like when it's dry, but that was fun. Okay, I think we'll keep it at that and just ask our famous question. What did you think of this ink? Whoa, that's really close up. I'm not used to that. Um, what did you think of it? Have you written with this one? I really like it, even though I don't tend to like inks that look too black coming out of the nib. But I think, really, I think I would enjoy this for a couple of different things. And I really appreciate having the sample. Thank you so much to my friend who, who sent that. And um, I just got two more in of the KWZ inks that are very interesting too. So I'll be back eventually with another ink profile. And I'd love to hear anything you have to say about this one in the comments and, and any inks that you're trying out right now. So thank you and bye for now.